Hey everyone, I'd like to give you an example of writing a linear equation. This is an example that's probably about as hard as you would run into when you're writing linear equations. Normally, all the information we need, or most of the information, is given in the problem and we're ready to go, we can just plug in. But this one, not so. Now, typically we got to start with information. We need a point a slope and a formula to write our linear equations. We're writing a linear equation that has the same y-intercept point as y minus 7x plus 8 equals 0. Well wait, what's the point? It didn't tell us a point to use. Oh man, that's going to require some extra thinking and logic. Well we can do that, That's we can figure it out and that's what we're going to have to do. Um, also, the line is supposed to be perpendicular to another line, 11x minus 9y equals 10. So we have a lot going on here, and we don't have a point to write our new line. Okay, so I'm going to make the new line here in blue. New line equation. And let's begin analyzing what we do have. I wish I had a point, and we don't. But we do have a clue on this one here. It's We have a point. It has to have the same y-intercept point. Same y-intercept point as this equation. Okay, so I'm going to do a little scratch work here and kind of think this out and see if we can analyze and logically come up with a point for our new line. Okay, so I have y minus 7x plus 8 equals 0, and I'm trying to find a point that I can use for my new line. Now, specifically, not just a random point, but I want the y-intercept point. Well, that reminds me of y equals mx plus b, because if I got b, I have the y-intercept point. So we can analyze this red equation here to help us find its y-intercept point. And we can do that by getting y by itself. Now I'm going to add the 7x to help get me y by itself. y, the 7x is canceled. I got plus 8. Now some of you could have done this in one step, which is fine, or, you know, one algebra process. I'm going to slow it down and do it little by little, but there we go, I have y by itself, the 8's cancel, and I got 7x minus 8. Now the red line in part A, I made it into slope-intercept form, and sure enough, there is B, which gives me my y-intercept point. This is my y-intercept point. Now logically, what does it say in the problem? It says my my new line has to have the same y-intercept point. Well, that's great. That means we know the y-intercept point. We get to use the same point as the red one. So by analyzing that first equation, it didn't tell us the point right away. We had to think out a way to get the red line equation to tell us what our y-intercept point would be. So we're good to go here with our point. Okay, next for our new line, we're going to need a slope. And the problem did not give us the slope number. But the problem did give us a clue. The perpendicular tells us stuff about slope. So my blue line, the new one, has to be perpendicular to this other equation. So I'm going to use the other equation, the green one this time. And I'm going to analyze that green equation and try to get information that I need. So my new line has to have a slope. That's the blue one. I'm looking for that slope number. But I don't know what it is. But I have a clue. It has to be perpendicular to the green one. Now I have the green equation. But that's not telling me the slope. But wait, again, 
that's reminding me of the slope-intercept formula. If I have y by itself, mx plus b, then the equation will tell me the slope. Okay, so let's, let's analyze this green one. Get y by itself so that it will tell us what its slope is. I'm going to minus 11x on both sides. I got minus 9y equals minus 11x plus 10. Then I'm going to divide by 9, negative 9, on both sides. That means divide everything. And now I got y by itself. Now, uh, a negative 11x over negative 9, negative divided by negative, is positive 11 ninths x. And then 10 divided by negative 9 is a negative 10 ninths. Okay, wait, I forgot. Why are we doing this? We're trying to find the slope for our new line. And we don't know what it is. But we do know the new line slope should be perpendicular to this other line. Hey, because we got y by itself, we actually now know this is y. I know the slope of the green line is 11 over 9. Hey, that can help me. So, what's the slope of my new line? Question mark. The, I'll make that blue. The new line slope has to be, oh, is it 11 over 9? Is that going to be this, the same slope? And the answer to that question is no, no. Um, now, the problem doesn't say make it parallel. If it said parallel here, instead of perpendicular, parallel lines have the same slope. That's for parallel. But we don't have parallel lines. We're supposed to make perpendicular lines. So perpendicular is a different slope relationship. Now, you've studied that in your class. The perpendicular slope is a negative reciprocal. Or you can think of it as the reciprocal with an opposite sign. So you've got to change two things. Change the sign and change the fraction into a reciprocal. So the new slope to be perpendicular has to be 9 over 11. And it has to be opposite sign. Since the green one is positive, my new slope has to be negative. So that is a negative reciprocal of the green one. But wait, because we analyzed the green one, we have this new line slope that we're supposed to use. So we are ready to go with writing the equation of our line. We're supposed to use negative 9 over 11. Now, what formula are we going to use? The two main ones are y equals mx plus b and y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. But this problem is being easy to us now. We had to work for the point and we had to work for the slope. But because we have the point that is the y-intercept point, ah, that's b. Let's use the easy equation. And because we got everything, we got the m and the b, let's plug in. y equals negative 9 over 11. That's m times x plus b. b is minus 8. There it is. That blue equation is our equation. Notice it's going to have the same y-intercept. Look at that minus 8 and minus 8. So the blue equation is going to intersect the red equation at the same y-intercept point. Look at the slope. The slope is negative 9 elevenths. That is the negative reciprocal slope of the green one. So the blue one will be perpendicular to the green one. This is actually something you could check and test if you graph the blue one, the green one, and the red one in Desmos, you would see all those relationships coming together. Okay, so we're done. We got the equation of that line. It just made us work at the beginning. We had to analyze one equation to get the intercept point, and we had to analyze the other equation to get the slope. But once we did that, we were good. Hey, I hope that was helpful.
study hard on this and good luck with your writing of linear equations. Well, here's a postscript. I'm giving you a visual confirmation of all our algebra work here. I did this in Desmos. You can see the, the red equation. Oops, wrong color. You can see the red equation. There's the, the green equation. And there's our blue equation. And I graphed them for us. And it shows several, two very important things. Uh, first, notice the the red one and the blue one have the same y-intercept point. That's exactly what we created the equations to do from the algebra a few minutes ago. And we also have an intersection point between the, the green one and the blue one. And the intersection is not just a random intersection, but that's a square corner. That's a 90 degree. That's a perpendicular intersection here. All of that fits with the algebra that we solved in the, the previous uh, 10 minutes or so. So I'll leave this here. You can pause and just kind of study it out. Look at all the relationships and connections there. But hopefully that visual also adds to your understanding of what we did with those equations. Good luck with this stuff. Study hard.